So when you have Acts chapter 27, shout yes. 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 Okay, now I just want you to keep it open, but I don't want you to start reading yet. But I want to talk to you briefly before we go read the Word of God. So don't start reading yet. I want to talk to you briefly before we get there. And this story that we're about to teach you today is about Paul's shipwreck experience. Okay? It's about Paul's shipwreck experience. And it's a very familiar story to many of you. But as we read the Word of God today, then you will understand what God is saying unto us about this shipwreck experience. So we find that Paul, he's on his way to Rome and Paul is actually a prisoner. He is a prisoner. He's a prisoner but there's something about Paul because he has favor from God. Tell you. And what we're going to show you today is some of your connections are tied into the favor of God on someone else's life. You're going to find that out. I said some of your, some favor that's on your life, some promises are connected to the favor of God on someone else's life. Amen. There are certain promises that God has given to you, but they're not for you independently. They are tied into someone else's breakthrough, someone else's favor. And we're going to see that on today. You're going to see that. So Paul, he's sailing on to Rome, and, and he's on his way. He is, he is a prisoner. Um, Paul is a special man of God. He's a special man of God because regardless of all the things that Paul went through all of the time, one thing about it is that when you are chosen, oh my goodness, you're going to have to go through so many things. Paul was shipwrecked. He said, thrice was I did this. They tried to kill Paul. He was in prison. All kinds of things happened. I want to let you know for those of us that are called, those of us that are chosen, it is the devil's job to try to stop you. It is the enemy's job to try to hinder you. But one thing about it, before we even read the word, you're going to find out that if God has a mission or something for you to do, ain't no devil in hell going to stop it. You may destroy my boat, but you can't destroy my mission. Now, I understand that when, when, you, when God has an assignment for you to do, the enemy's job is to try to stop you. And how many of you know on today, and not to promote the enemy, but I want to let you know that the enemy does his job well. Yes. He, he does his job well. He actually does not take many lunch breaks. He doesn't. He doesn't take a break. I, I, I find that every time, no matter how early I wake up in the morning, he's already up. Amen. Don't matter how late I go to bed, he is still up. I, I found out that this devil is always on his job. He, his job is to try to hinder you from doing the things of God. Sometimes he's not talking to you, but you feel him. And you, you will find out that the enemy, he does his job well. But we are some warriors in this house. And, that, and as a warrior of God, I found out a long time ago that we that are warriors, my ship may get wrecked. But as long as I got Jesus, I'm going to be all right. So you got to understand, as long as you got Jesus, it doesn't matter what the enemy brings my way. But we going to get to a point. Yeah. 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 We're, we're going to find, 
just so excited. Oh, sit down. Let, let, let's go into the word. Acts 27, verse 22. Now, this shipwreck story. Jesus! I'm going to tell you, I'm going to title this Stay with Paul. Stay with Paul. Look at David say, stay with Paul. Stay with Paul. Yeah. And there's a subtopic. I'm going to tell you, stay in ship. Stay in ship. You got to understand it. Bye bye. Stay with Paul. Stay with Paul. And stay in the ship. Look at David say, stay with Paul. Stay with Paul. Mm -hmm. Stay in the ship. And stay in the ship. Look at Jacob and say, stay with Paul. Stay with Paul. And stay in the ship. Stay in the ship. Oh. Stay with Paul. Yes. And stay in the ship. Yes. We're going to pick up and read 22. Hallelujah. Verse 22. And then we're going to go from 22 to 26. And we're going to pause and we're going to go to another passage on this scripture, verse 22. Bishop, can you read today verse 22? And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. Look, because God had given Paul a promise. Hmm. There's 276 prisoners on the ship. But Paul says, read that again, Bishop. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you. Wait. There shall be no loss. Ooh, I'm getting excited already. <laughs> is saying to them there shall be no loss as long as you hang out with me.
Paul. Now see, Paul represents whomever God has put as the leader. And, and, and don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean, I'm not saying that you can't ever depart from a leader and be blessed. So don't get that because that's the spirit of witchcraft, see, when people don't want you to depart. That's not what I'm saying. But there are some blessings and promises that's just designed for the leader. And in order for them to roll off on you, you got to hang out with Paul. God said we're about to have a worldwide ministry, so you got to hang out with the promise. Whoever God has given the promise to, and you believe God shall, yeah! But of the ship, for well, there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. Paul says, the reason that I can tell you to don't get out the ship, because I had a visitation. The angel, when I least six. Oh, an angel came to visit me, and he let me know it was going to be all right. I was not least expected. I wasn't even looking for this visitation. You know how you're not looking for God to show up, and he meets you right where you are, and he gives you the real assurance that everything is going to be all right. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Have any of you ever tried to call you in 
and wrap you up and tie you up. But just because of favor you do, made it through. Just because of favor you got out. Just because of favor, someone shall pay. Under color as they 
as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. Wait. Wow. Oh. Wow. 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 The centurion, his name was Julius. You find that early on if you read this at home, uh, verse 2, they named who he was. And God gave Julius to give Paul favor. And, and with all of this favor of what Paul was, was um, on the ship, hallelujah, Paul is talking to the centurion, his name is Julius, and he says, look, unless these people abide in the ship, they cannot be saved. Because if you get out of the ship, oh, my God, Paul is saying, the promise and the victory that's over my life can't transfer to you because God's promise is that the 276 if they hang out with me, Paul, then you shall be saved. But if you get out the ship, then you get out of favor. There are some promises that's for me and because you hang out with me, you're going to get what's for me that you're only going to get through the connection with me. Now don't get it twisted. I'm not saying you can't leave the church, but I'm going to let you know certain promises and all my life will hit you independently. They're tied into my faith. They're tied into my prayer life. That when God opens the door to enlarge my territory, he, he may not be saying, shut up, I'm enlarging your territory, but your territory automatically gets enlarged because you're connected to me. So because you're connected to me, you want to be, oh, somebody scream.
three score and 16 souls. Paul is letting us know. See, and remember, score is 20. So 200 and three score is 60. And 16 more comes out to 276 people. Paul is saying it's 276 of us. Now, verse number 42. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, uh -huh. lest any of them should swim out and escape. Now look, they're, they're prisoners. The devil's got a purpose. The devil's got a purpose to kill you. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah, Sunday. They were prisoners. That's right, that's right. They were right. prisoners. Yes. And the devil had a plan. Uh -huh. 
But this man said to me, I says that Paul is one of these real disciples. Hallelujah. Was he the one that they laid people in the street and his shower him? Yeah. Was that him or Peter? Okay. I says, Paul is one of these real disciples. The centurion spoke up to save Paul. The devil's got a plan for you. God will even use your enemies to speak up. The very ones that, that you think are trying to destroy you, God will use those same voices to promote you to the next level to save you because God's got a covenant agreement with your name on it. And every time, look, so every time they even talk about you, they're giving your name free publicity. Oh, I love publicity. Promote me all that you want to because if you promote me, the Jesus in me, you might as well take God because I'm all about Jesus. Yeah. 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 You shouldn't even get mad when people start talking about you because oh, yeah. people have gotten mad I, I, I told myself I'm praying for you. They got real mad. And I'm, oh my God. And, and guess what? I'm still going to pray for them. It doesn't stop. And I understand why they get mad. Because when a person is not walking in the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God aggravates them. The Spirit of God gets them upset. But that's all right. I'm chosen by God. And I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to lay hands. I'm still going to speak lies. that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. Keep reading 44, please. And the rest, some on boards, uh -huh. and some on broken pieces of the ship. Uh -huh. And so it is, and so it came to pass yes. that they escaped all safe to land. But stay with Paul. Stay on the ship. Watch this. Until Paul gives you instructions of what you need to do to survive the storm. So God is talking to Paul because the promise was unto Paul. So he gave Paul wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. He said, I want you to divide this group into three categories. Somebody say three. Three. He said, those that can swim, tell them to swim. Now, they couldn't get out the ship until Paul told them it was time for them to swim. Because God is using Paul to make them survive the storm. But you've got to follow Paul. You've got to listen to Paul. Now, I could imagine in my own mind uh, that some people will say, well, why did they tell them to swim? And they leaving me to lie on the board. Don't jump out till I tell you. 
Now he said, I want some of you to grab some boards. Lay on the board. You'll be safe. They made it to the other side. The last group, he said, just grab a broken piece. Just grab a broken piece. Any piece, any piece, just grab a piece. Just grab a piece. Just just grab a piece. Just touch the hem of Jesus Christ. Just grab a piece. Just grab a hold of something. Just grab a hold. And if you grab a hold of it, you'll make it over to the other side. Somebody stand to your feet and exalt your God. God is shaking. 